Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting Blog. And in this video, I'm going to do a detailed analysis of the 308 Winchester cartridge and how it compares to two bigger bore cartridges that used the 308 as a parent case, the 338 Federal and the 358 Winchester. Now, most hunters and shooters are probably familiar with the 308 as well as cartridges like the 243, the 7mm 08 the 260 Remington, etc. that are descended from it. However, the 338 Federal and the 358 Winchester are also well-designed short-action cartridges descended from the 308, but neither one is as well-known as those other cartridges I just mentioned. Now, indeed, the 358 Winchester was actually one of the very first cartridges designed using a modified 308 Winchester case, while the 338 Federal is a relatively new SAMI standardized cartridge. Now, they each have limitations, but both cartridges do offer certain advantages over the 308. So, this episode is a detailed comparison of the 308 versus the 338 Federal versus the 358 Winchester, where I parse out the differences between those cartridges, and so you can make an informed decision regarding which one is best for you. Before we get started, I would appreciate it if you would do me two favors. First, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click that red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos about hunting gear reviews, cartridge comparisons, and more. Next, click on the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting calibers that will provide some more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges and what they are best suited for. Okay, now that you've done those things, let's get started talking about the 308 Winchester, the 338 Federal, and the 358 Winchester. So Winchester first unveiled the cartridge we now know as the 308 Winchester in 1952. The product of a search by the U.S. military for a new cartridge to replace the venerable 30 6 Springfield after World War II, the new 30 caliber Winchester cartridge, and the extremely similar 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO cartridge the military eventually adopted was almost exactly as powerful as the 30 6 However, those newer cartridges used a significantly smaller package. Indeed, the original 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO M80 ball load fired a 146 grain full metal jacket bullet at 2,750 feet per second. This was almost exactly the same as the ballistics of the original 30 6 Springfield load, which was a 150 grain bullet at 2,700 feet per second, and they both fired a 308 caliber bullet. However, the 7.62 by 51 and the 308 Winchester both achieved that performance with a much shorter 51 millimeter versus a 63 millimeter case due to advances in powder technology that occurred after the development of the 30 6 Though the 30 6 remained quite popular among big game hunters, the 308 Winchester has steadily grown in popularity over the ensuing decades as well and is now one of the most popular and commonly used centerfire rifle cartridges in the world. As is the case with many other well-designed cartridges, the 308 has served as the parent for many Wildcat and factory derivative cartridges. The 243 Winchester, the 260 Remington, and the 7mm 08 Remington are among the most popular cartridges descended from the 308 Winchester these days, and they use a modified 308 Winchester case necked down to 6mm or 0.243 inches, 6.5mm or 0.264 inches, and 7mm or 0.284 inches, respectively. Now, unveiled the same year as the 243 Winchester all the way back in 1955, the 358 Winchester also uses a modified 308 Winchester case. Now, instead of necking the case down to use a smaller bullet, though, the designers at Winchester opted to use a 308 Winchester case necked up to 35 caliber. Shooting heavier and larger 0.358 inch, which is 9.1 millimeter diameter bullets, but still fitting in a relatively compact package like the 308 Winchester, the 358 Winchester had a lot of potential. The original load of a 200 grain silver tip at nearly 2,500 feet per second was significantly more powerful than the 35 Remington and offered a similar level of performance to the heavy hitting 348 Winchester. Though the 348 Winchester was only available in the older Model 71 lever action rifle, the 358 Winchester was initially offered in the more modern Winchester Model 70 and Model 88 rifles. Unfortunately, the 358 Winchester cartridge never really took off with the general hunting community. It initially gained a reputation as a good woods cartridge for hunting medium game. 
While the 358 Winchester certainly performed extremely well in that role, it was much more capable at longer ranges than many people gave the cartridge credit for. Even so, the cartridge remained pigeonholed as a woods or brush cartridge in the minds of many hunters and shooters, and it never really caught on as an all-around big-game hunting cartridge in the hunting community at large. Though it's still hanging around, the cartridge has greatly declined in popularity in recent years. Undeterred by the fate of the 358 Winchester, Federal took a stab at building a new cartridge using a necked up 308 Winchester case in the early 2000s. Formally released in 2006, the 338 Federal was the first cartridge to ever bear the Federal name. Using a 308 Winchester case necked up to use .338 inch bullets, the 338 Federal is advertised as having more muzzle energy than the 7mm Remington Magnum, and shooting flatter, retaining more energy, and having less recoil than the 30 out 6 Oh, and the 338 Federal does all of that while at the same time fitting in a short-length rifle action as well. The shared heritage of the 308 Winchester, 338 Federal, and 358 Winchester are obvious if you look at the three cartridges side by side. They have the same rim diameter, the same case length, and the same 20 degree shoulder angle. Though they all have different overall lengths, they are all still very similar in overall size and will all fit in a short action rifle. Not surprisingly, all three cartridges have very similar case capacities as well. Bullet size is the biggest distinguishing factor between them. The 308 Winchester uses 308 caliber bullets, the 338 Federal uses .338 inch bullets, and the 358 Winchester uses .358 inch bullets. Additionally, all three cartridges have basically the same maximum pressure. Though the differences in the external dimensions of the three cartridges are relatively minor, there are some interesting differences in their ballistic performance though. This is illustrated when you compare Buffalo Bore, Federal Fusion, and Hornady factory ammunition loaded with 150 grain and 180 grain Fusion soft point bullets in 308 Winchester, 200 grain Fusion soft point bullets in 338 Federal, and 200 grain Interlock soft point bullets and 225 grain Barnes triple shot X bullets in 358 Winchester. Not surprisingly, the 150 grain 308 Winchester load has the flattest trajectory of the bunch. Interestingly though, the 180 grain 308 Winchester and 200 grain 338 Federal loads have almost the exact same trajectory, but the 338 Federal load has more kinetic energy all the way out to 500 yards. Both 358 Winchester loads have more kinetic energy than both 308 Winchester loads at short range. That advantage is especially pronounced with the Buffalo Bore load. However, both 308 loads use more aerodynamic bullets and have a higher muzzle velocity, so they have a flatter trajectory and surpass the 358 Winchester in the energy department as they travel downrange. The 338 Federal seems to fit in something of a sweet spot out of the three cartridges, though, and clearly offers a definite, though not gigantic, ballistic advantage over the other two. It also has a markedly flatter trajectory and retains more kinetic energy at all ranges than these 358 Winchester loads. Now, while the 150 grain 308 Winchester load does have a somewhat flatter trajectory than the 338 Federal, the 338 Federal has virtually the same trajectory as the 180 grain 308 Winchester load, and it has substantially more kinetic energy than both 308 loads from the muzzle out to 500 yards. This is not too surprising, though, considering the 338 Federal is firing a 200 grain bullet about 100 feet per second faster than the 308 is firing a 180 grain bullet. What about the claim that the 338 Federal has more muzzle energy than the 7mm Remington Magnum? Muzzle energy varies depending on the exact manufacturer and load we're talking about, but for the most part, yes, it is accurate to say that the 338 Federal has more muzzle energy than the 7mm Magnum. For instance, the 338 Federal load we've been talking about shooting a 200 grain bullet at 2700 feet per second has 3217 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Federal has two 7mm Remington Magnum loads in their Fusion line, a 150 grain bullet at 3,050 feet per second, which works out to 3,098 foot-pounds of energy, and a 175 grain bullet at 2,760 feet per second for 2,960 foot-pounds of energy. That being said, though, the 7mm Magnum quickly surpasses the 338 Federal in the energy department as the bullets travel downrange. Furthermore, that claim only applies to the standard 338 Federal Fusion load, not the Federal Fusion MSR, Modern Sporting Rifle load, the company also manufactures, which is a 185 grain bullet at 2,680 feet per second for 2,950 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Okay, so now let's get back to talking about the 338 Federal, 308 Winchester, and 358 Winchester, and specifically let's talk about recoil. 
I'm not aware of any rifles that are currently manufactured in all three cartridges, so in the interest of making as close to an apples-to-apples -apples comparison as possible, I just decided to make a comparison with a hypothetical rifle that weighs exactly the same for each cartridge. Using the same loads that we were just talking about, the 308 Winchester has the least recoil of the bunch, with recoil progressively increasing with the 338 Federal and 358 Winchester. The 338 Federal and especially the 308 Winchester have a pretty manageable amount of recoil that most hunters and shooters should be able to handle without much trouble at all. However, recoil does increase by a fair amount when you go from the 308 up to the 358 Winchester. And remember though, we're talking about the figures for a 7.3 pound rifle. The Browning BLR, which is the most popular rifle chambered in 358 Winchester these days, is quite a bit lighter at only 6.5 pounds. That same load in the lighter Browning BLR produces even more free recoil energy, which for this particular load is closely approaching 300 Win Mag levels. Even then, that may not be a big issue for most hunters, but it's certainly something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about some additional areas that we need to discuss as it relates to ballistics, bullet caliber, and bullet weight. Just like their name says, the 308 Winchester uses .308 inch bullets, the 338 Federal uses .338 inch bullets, and the 358 Winchester uses .358 inch bullets. The 308 Winchester has the smallest frontal surface area of the bunch. The larger diameter 338 Federal has about 20% more cross-sectional area, and the 358 Winchester uses the largest diameter bullets of the bunch and has therefore the largest frontal surface area. This is about 35% more cross-sectional area than the 308 Winchester, and about 12% more than the 338 Federal. All other things being equal, a bigger bullet will make a bigger hole, cause more tissue damage, and result in more blood loss. This is a significant advantage for the 338 Federal, and an even bigger advantage for the 358 Winchester when they're both compared to the 308 Winchester. With regards to bullet weight, the majority of 308 Winchester factory loads shoot bullets in the 110 to 180 grain range. 150, 165, 168, 180 grain bullets are by far the most common. On the other hand, 338 Federal Factory ammo is normally offered with either 185 grain or 200 grain bullets, and 200 grain bullets are most popular for the 338 Federal. Finally, the majority of 358 factory loads shoot bullets in the 180 to 225 grain range. Of these, 200 grain and to a lesser extent 185 and 225 grain bullets are the most common. Though it's not readily available as factory ammo, many reloading manuals have loads for up to 250 grain bullets for that cartridge. So where do we stand with each one? Shooting smaller diameter and generally lighter bullets than the other two, the 308 Winchester has the flattest trajectory, the best resistance to wind drift, and the least recoil of the bunch. Most loads for the cartridge also carry more energy downrange than typical 358 Winchester loads, but not quite as much as the 338 Federal. Now the 338 Federal shoots bullets larger in diameter and generally heavier than the 308 Winchester, but lighter and smaller than the 358 Winchester. Typical 200 grain 338 Federal factory loads have a trajectory that's almost identical to the 180 grain 308 Winchester factory loads, but the loads for the Federal cartridge also have more kinetic energy all the way out past 500 yards. The 338 Federal is not quite as resistant to wind drift as the 308 Winchester, though, and it does have more recoil than the smaller 308 Winchester as well. Now, the 358 Winchester shoots the largest diameter bullets of the bunch. It's also capable of using the heaviest bullets of the group. Those bullets are typically not very aerodynamic, and they're not shot at a very high velocity. The 358 Winchester also has more recoil, a more arcing trajectory, and less resistant to wind drift than the other two cartridges. So with that in mind, typical 358 Winchester loads have more kinetic energy than typical 308 Winchester hunting loads out to around 100 to 200 yards, but the faster and more aerodynamic 308 Winchester bullets quickly surpass the 358 Winchester as the range increases. Most 338 Federal factory loads have more kinetic energy than the 358 Winchester at all ranges. Okay, now let's talk about ammo availability. The 308 Winchester is by far the most popular out of the bunch. In fact, that cartridge is certainly one of the top 10 best-selling cartridges in the United States each year, if not in the top five. For that reason, just about every ammo manufacturer of note produces a wide variety of ammo for the 308. 338 Federal ammo and 358 Winchester ammo are much less common than the 308. As far as I know, only Federal Premium mass produces 338 Federal ammo. 
As of late 2019, the company produces 338 Federal ammunition as part of their Federal Fusion, Trophy Bonded, Power Shock, Trophy Copper, American Eagle, and Federal Fusion MSR rifle ammo lines. Even though only one company manufactures 338 Federal ammo at this point, it's not too difficult to find, though. Some of the smaller sporting goods stores may not keep 338 Federal ammo in stock, but most of the bigger stores, as well as a number of inter- internet retailers, sell ammo for the cartridge. Now, now on the other hand, the 358 Winchester is even more rare. I'm only aware of three options for factory-loaded 358 Winchester ammo at this point. A 200-grain interlock spire point load as part of the Hornady Custom Ammo line, a 225-grain Sierra load from Buffalo Boar, and a 225-grain barn TSX from Buffalo Boar. Now, it's still possible to find 358 Winchester ammo if you look hard enough, but it's by far the least common and most difficult to, uh, to obtain out of these three cartridges. Now, the good news is that reloading components for all three are widely available. The 308 Winchester uses the extremely popular 308 bullet size that's also used by almost every other 30 caliber cartridge that's popular in the U.S., the 3030 Winchester, the 30 out 6, the 300 Winmag, and the 300 WSM, among many others. The 338 Federal uses the same 338 bullet size, also used by the 338 Winmag and the 338 Lapua. At the same time, the 358 Winchester uses the same 0.358 inch bullet diameter as the other major 35 caliber cartridges like the 35 Remington, the 35 Whalen, and the 358 Norma Magnum. Just like with factory ammo, there are a bunch of different 308 bullets for for reloaders to choose from. Since it's probably the most single popular caliber in the U.S., virtually every major style of bullet is available in 30 caliber. Now, there's still a pretty good selection of 338 bullets to choose from, but they're not quite as common as 308 bullets. And once again, there are even fewer 358 bullets than 338 bullets, but there's still a decent selection of them. That reason, combined with the relative scarcity of 358 Winchester factory ammo, makes that cartridge an especially appealing choice for handloaders. Now, the rifle situation is very similar to the ammo situation with these three cartridges. The 308 Winchester is by far the most popular, with the 338 Federal and the 358 Winchester, in that order, following far behind it. Among many others, the Browning X Bolt, CZ 550, Kimber Hunter, Mossberg Patriot, Remington Model 700, the Ruger American, the Ruger Hawkeye, the Tika T3, the Weatherby Mark V and Vanguard, the Winchester Model 70, and the Winchester XPR are all available in 308 Winchester. The 338 Federal was initially offered in rifles manufactured by Saco. Over the years, Ruger, Kimber, and Tika, among others, have all produced rifles in that chambering. Currently, Savage and Wilson Combat are the two primary options for hunters wanting a new semi-auto or bolt-action rifle or carbine chambered in 338 Federal. Now, Winchester manufactured the 358 Winchester in the Model 88 lever-action rifle and the Model 70 bolt-action rifle for a time. It was also available in the Savage Model 99 and the Ruger Model 77. At this time, the Browning BLR, Browning lever-action rifle, is the only rifle currently manufactured in 358 Winchester. Now, as you can see, there's a wide disparity in the availability between these three cartridges. That being said, a serious hunter should still be able to find a high-quality running hunting rifle that suits his or her needs well, regardless of the one that's chosen, though. So which one is right for you? Do you primarily hunt medium-sized game animals like deer, feral hogs, or black bear at ranges within 200 yards? The 308 Winchester, 338 Federal, and 358 Winchester are all wonderfully suited for hunting medium game like mule deer, black-tailed deer, white-tailed deer, roe deer, and fallow deer. They have similar trajectories inside 200 yards, and they will get the job done on a wide variety of game. Go with the 308 Winchester if you want the cheapest or the easiest to find factory ammo, or if you're sensitive to recoil. Go with the 358 Winchester or the 338 Federal if you want the hardest-hitting cartridge. Now, are you looking for a great cartridge for hunting game like pronghorn or deer in open country where you might need to take a shot at several hundred yards? With typical hunting factory loads, the 308 Winchester has an advantage over the others in this regard with a flatter trajectory, the most resistance to wind wind drift, and still plenty of power at extended range. Though neither the 338 Federal or the 358 Winchester are really good long-range cartridges, they're still much more capable in this role than many people give them credit for. Are you sensitive to recoil? Though most hunters should be able to handle the recoil of all three cartridges, the 308 Winchester has the least recoil of the bunch. That's especially true with lighter 150 gram bullets. 
Now, are you looking for a great cartridge for sheep, mountain goat, or tar hunting where you need a heavy-hitting cartridge with manageable recoil and a lightweight and easy-to-carry rifle? Though it's not usually thought of as a sheep or mountain hunting cartridge, the 308 Winchester wins hands down here due to its flatter trajectory, more resistance to wind drift, and lighter recoil even in lightweight rifles. Are you a hand loader? If not, then you should probably stay away from the 358 Winchester, unless you're fine with just a couple brands of factory ammo, and go with either the 338 Federal or 308 Winchester. If you are a hand loader, all three cartridges are generally good options for reloaders. Now, do you want a cartridge well suited to hunt large game like elk, moose, red stag, or kudu? In addition to all being excellent choices for deer sized game, these cartridges are also suitable for bigger creatures under the right circumstances. This is an area where the 358 Winchester at close range and the 338 Federal really shine when compared to the 308 Winchester. Especially for shots inside 200 yards, both cartridges are excellent choices for bigger game when they're larger diameter and heavier bullets. Though I'd personally prefer a bigger bore like a 375 or a 4570 for use on big bears, the 338 Federal and 358 Winchester will also probably get the job done in those circumstances as well. The 308 Winchester is no slouch though. In fact, at longer range, the 308 Winchester is a better choice as the advantage the 338 Federal has in kinetic energy narrows considerably and the advantages the 308 Winchester has in terms of trajectory and wind drift become more pronounced. Now, all three of them are great rifle cartridges. While there is a large amount of overlap in their capabilities, each one does offer certain advantages. You need to carefully analyze your potential needs and choose the best one that you think will fit them the best. Even so, no animal will ever know the difference if your shot is placed in the right spot. Get a good hunting rifle chambered in the cartridge you think fits your needs the best, learn to shoot it well, use quality bullets, and you'll be all set for most hunting situations. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Now, for more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges and what they are best suited for, click the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting calibers. Now, I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you think of the 338 Federal and the 358 Winchester? Have you hunted with either of those cartridges? Do you think they're appropriate for what you, what you need in a hunting cartridge? Now, if you have used it, what game have you successfully taken with it and what ammo were you using? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and good hunting.